if we took away discrimination, overt, covert, we'd probably still have a gender leadership gap. We don't have a pipeline problem. We have a flow problem. Women enter the pipeline, they stay in the pipeline, but they're not moving through the pipeline. Or at least they're not moving through the pipeline at the same rate. This is the essence of our gender leadership gap pro problem. I feel like I need like some kind of drum roll. Is there any drum roll music que queued up? Oh, that's awesome, thank you. I'm about to announce to you my theory. So here it comes, what is causing the gender leadership gap? It should have been given away with the title of the talk. <laughs> Maybe. So it's an inside job. Inside, there's a super secret villain who's living there. It's like an undiagnosed tumor. On the outside, you look normal, but there's something festering. And it really is imposter syndrome. It's clogging the flow of our pipeline. It's stopping women from reaching the pinnacle of their careers. Now, some of you are sitting there going, what the heck is she talking about? I've never heard of imposter syndrome. Yes, only I see a few smiles only. So let me tell you my definition. So my definition of imposter syndrome is that it's faulty wiring. It's a misfire in the brain that's causing an individual to think less of themselves than the world thinks of them. It's also, I like to, actually, I don't like the term imposter syndrome. What I really like is my own term. I've coined it. Um, I haven't trademarked it yet, uh, Amanda. Amanda. Where's Amanda? I need to trademark this. It's really good. Self-underappreciation syndrome. It rolls off the tongue, don't you think? It's like perfect. <laughs> we could call it S-U-A-S or something like that. Anyway, there's some signs and symptoms you should be aware of. Uh, feeling inadequate, undeserving, um, doubting your own accomplishments, fear of being discovered as a fake or a fraud. One of the speakers this morning said that. I'm just waiting for someone to find out. Most of you have felt that way too. Or an inability to internalize and get joy from success. I mean, I really haven't ever said that I was successful out loud. And probably you haven't either. This is my little diagram of imposter syndrome. It's not one-sided. There's a whole spectrum. And on one side is imposter syndrome, self-underappreciation syndrome, if you like that better. And on the other side is self-overappreciation syndrome. Um, you might know them differently, like arrogant, narcissist, asshole. <laughs> Maybe. There's a technical name. It's called Dunning-Kruger effect. You remember I said, have you ever been called one in a million? Well, there's a couple people probably in this room who actually think they're one in a million. And they would be on that other end. Now, it is interesting that it was claimed, the other end, by two men, Dunning and Kruger. So I believe that we could claim our end of the spectrum. So I'd like to name it Cl the Clance Young Effect. There are two women who have been really instrumental in, in labeling this. So let's call it that from now on. In my experience, looking at a lot of women with imposter syndrome, there's basically four dysfunctions. Number one, first, we have a really skewed self-image. It's pathologically skewed. Number two, we don't show the world our true selves. We show up as an avatar, a persona. The classic ones in imposter syndrome are perfectionism. Maybe that's a friend of yours. Yeah, or superwoman. I heard some superwomen here today. Awesome superwomen. That's an avatar. Number three, we don't process challenges very well. We either throw manic energy at something, all-encompassing, forgetting even to eat, or we shrink away from it entirely. And number four, we don't metabolize feed feedback very well. And you know what? That includes praise and criticism, both ends. So I'm only going to be able to scratch the surface of these today, so I'm going to focus entirely on the inner critic, my friend and yours. So some of you are sitting there going, yeah, yeah, that's all cool, I understand the definition, but tell me how to recognize it. Now, it's actually not that easy to recognize. You know why? Because imposter syndrome people are really good at hiding it, blending in, not even being noticed. But I'll tell you how to spot it if you want. You want the secret? Just look around and pick seven people out of 10. It's present in about 70% of women. I mean, men have it too, but I don't care about them. <laughs> um, they do, they can. It's terrible when they have it, I'm sorry for them. Um, and it turns out to be really prevalent in, in minorities as well. 
and we do care about that a lot. So if you're wondering if it's you, I have an assessment on my website. It's not my assessment, it's Clance's original assessment. Um, actually, if you really want, I got really technically fancy. I've got you a QR code here. I think it works, but I can't confirm that. Um, <laughs> you can take the assessment. But you know what? You don't have to take it. We'll do a little experiment right now. Quick and easy, right here and now. Okay, close your eyes so you can remain anonymous. <laughs> okay. You don't have to raise your hands if you want to, you can, but you don't have to. In the morning today, has there been a moment when you compared yourself to somebody else and lost? I can't believe she was made partner before me. I was noticing people's shoes myself. Mine were seeming pretty dull. Is there, has there been a moment today when you chastised yourself, berated yourself, disparaged yourself, insulted yourself? Oh my gosh, you sounded so stupid when you were talking to that CEO. Or here, when I started the presentation and I was looking for somebody in the audience, did you worry that it was you? Yeah. If you answered yes, you might be suffering from imposter syndrome. So I love metaphors, um, and I'm sorry, I'm a pathologist, so you're getting a medical one. Too bad. But say, you'll, like CME, you're learning something, continuing education. My metaphor for imposter syndrome is sickle cell anemia. So I put together this custom collage video, and I do want to tell you that no, contrary to what my 15-year-old son said, I was not smoking pot when I narrated it. I don't smoke pot. I, I'm at a state institution where drug tested regularly. It was not, it was just a calming voice. It's just a calming voice. Let's take a tour into your blood vessels. Normal red blood cells are donut shaped and very flexible. They easily change shape to fit into even the tiniest capillaries. The blood cells travel at 500 miles per hour through your body to deliver necessary oxygen to all your organs and tissues. In sickle cell disease, the red blood cells look deceptively normal, but they harbor a single genetic mutation that causes them to become misshapen and rigid and inflexible when they are under stress. Normal red cells can last up to four months in circulation, but sickle cells can be destroyed within two weeks. Because of their shape and their rigidity, the sickle cells clump up and stick to the sides of the blood vessels. And while the sickle cells cling to the vessel walls and stick to each other, the normal red cells flow by at 500 miles per hour. So let me bring it alive for you. In imposter syndrome, you look perfectly normal on the outside. But in a challenging situation, these mutated selves show up behind us, sitting there camouflaged, and they're quietly whispering. So under stress, that mutated self is the one that reaches out and it grabs the wall of our pipeline, and it holds on tight. When we're clinging to the walls, we're not noticed. We're passed over and overlooked, while the others who are unencumbered are flying by at 500 miles per hour. So this is the pipeline problem. We're sticking to the wall. So I wanted to focus on the inner critic. There's a lot we could talk about, but I want to stick to this inner critic idea today. And the inner critic is that voice, that nagging voice, cajoling, nitpicking, the comparer voice, the one that was comparing you to somebody else, the insulting voice. It might be easier to see it than to talk about it. I run a program for women, um, uh, women physicians on imposter syndrome, and, eat, and I just finished up a cohort, a wonderful group of, of 15 women, um, including an Ivy League robotic surgeon, oh, heads of groups, system medical directors, top ap academic physicians. And in the second week of the program, I asked them to fill the screen with their imposter thoughts. Here are their voices. Give you a minute for that to sink in. Living with your inner critic 
is a little bit like living in a house with furniture that you hate. Sometimes it's easier to hear the voice than to read it. My dark circles are literally too dark for concealer on, cool. My lips are literally so small. And my nose is so big. And my eyebrows are so bushy. What else is wrong with me, Rachel? What? I'm you when you were little. You said my dark circles were too dark. My nose was too big, my lips were too small, and my eyebrows were too bushy. What else is wrong with me, Rachel? There's nothing wrong with you. No, go ahead, Rachel. Tell me everything you hate about me. No, I'm not going to do that. That's exactly what you're doing to yourself right now. Tell me my stretch marks are ugly. No, I can't. What do you think about the scar near my eye? What do you think about my hairy arms or my ugly feet? They're beautiful. You're beautiful. Then why can't you say that to yourself? So we've talked about what imposter syndrome is. We've talked about how I think it's inextricably linked to the gender leadership gap in all of our fields. But what I haven't done is given you anything to deal with it. And lastly, I want to finish with a tool. Now, I can't cram 12 hours of training into 25 minutes, but I'm going to give you one very simple tool that you can take home with you. But first, I have to just address one thing that comes up, and that is the idea that what I might be presenting is a little bit like victim blaming. And I want to be very clear that there is no question that there is discrimination. There is no question that there's a patriarchy that we all live under. There's no question. And I, for one, plan to continue to be an activist. But I am a part of that complex system. And I have control over me. So why not work on me so that when the system is fixed and I'm afforded equal opportunities, I say yes like you did. I want to be the person who's ready to say yes. So yes, yes, that's who I want to be. So again, can't cram it all in, but I'll give you this one tool. And the tool is simple. I like to call it the thought wrench, and I'll show you why in just a minute. First, label your inner critic. Hear it. Notice it. Write it down. Start to call it out. Put it in front of you, not behind you. Don't let it whisper in your ear. Make it speak the words out loud. Second, question it. Bother it. The best question you can ask yourself is, is this true? Is this impeccably true? Is this 100% true? Third question, the hardest. What's a different thought that would make me more resourceful? Reframing. So let's just practice it. We have a couple minutes less, but let's practice. So think in your head. You don't have to write anything down. You don't have to say anything out loud. Think in your head of your inner critic voice, whichever one you want to use today. Now ask yourself the question, is it impeccably true? And then ask yourself the question, what's a different thought that would make me more resourceful? The last one's so hard. It's so hard, and a lot of people draw a blank on that last step. So here's a little pro tip from me to you. This is where the thought wrench comes in. Take your wrench and shift your thought to the 180 degree opposite. Man, you were so stupid talking to that CEO. Holy cow, I was freaking brilliant talking to that CEO. <laughs> so most likely you're going to be like, uh, not exactly, no. They're, neither of them's true. So the key thing is to work in the middle. Use your wrench, <clears throat> wrench it back. Find a place in between. Find a place in between that makes you resourceful. And that's a great way to stop, stop that inner critic. I want to leave you with two things. I'm going to leave you with a quote and a wish. So here's the quote. It's not what you are that holds you back. It's what you think you are not. 
and the wish. Um, anyone who's practiced meditation knows there's this thing called meta meditation or loving kindness meditation. It's a wonderful tool on compassion and self-compassion. Now, I rewrote them slightly for you. So normally it's may you be happy, may you be healthy, may you be safe. Mine are for you today. May your garden be fertilized by a non-toxic, safe nutrient instead of manure, or otherwise known as bullshit. <laughs> may your garden grow tall poppies instead of imposter thistles. May you stay flexible and adaptable and be proudly donut-shaped or eat donuts or something to do with donuts. <laughs> now, I want to end by telling you a little secret. When I searched the room this morning, or this, this, the, at the beginning, um, I was looking for you, but not because you have imposter syndrome. I was looking for someone who was going to change the world if she just unlocked the powerful, amazing, strong, capable, authentic self inside of her. And that gives me my last meta wish for you. May you unlock your authentic self. Let go of the wall of your pipeline and flow at 500 miles per hour to a success and destiny that are surely yours. Thank you. <laughs>